Hey guys, welcome back to another deck profile. Today I'm going to be showing you uh, my Gold Paladin Ezel standard deck. So yeah, while this deck is not like super great, it's still a lot of fun. And I like Gold Paladin for some reason. So I'm going to show you my deck. So starting is our starter, Crimson Lion Cub Carif, which is like awesome because it's just like every other starter because it's when you ride on it, you get to draw a card. And it's Kyrif. It's cute. Uh, yeah. I'm just really happy for Gold Paladin to be back. On to the Grade Threes. We're running four copies of Incandescent Lion Blonde Ezel. So this is a Ezel standard deck. So we're running four Ezel. So Ezel's skill is, whoopsie, when he's in your hand and you have Knight of Superior Skills, Bow Mains, and Gareth on your Vienna Rearguard Circle, you can Soul Blast Kyrif from your soul and ride this from your hand, uh, and if your opponent's vanguard is great to or less, it gets drive minus one. So you can superior ride. You can get over uh, Zambaku, probably, if you like are stunned vanguard and you call Bowmans and Gareth, you just ride from hand and boom, you get over it. And then when it's on your vanguard circle and it attacks, you can call a card from your hand to the rearguard circle. That gives you more attacks during the battle phase. So yeah, we want to run four of that so you can get that superior right off and be superior than your opponent or something like that. Um, three copies of Battlefield Storm Sagamore. So Sagamore's skill is when it's placed from hand, you soul blast one, draw a card, and call a card from your hand to rear. So this is really important because you need to be able to proc off the effects of like Dindrain and Gareth. Uh, in order to get their effects off because there's not much superior calling from the deck anymore in standard so uh, You want to use Sagamore a lot. Uh, so I'm going to run three copies instead of four and the reason for that is because I Really love this next card so much that I am running three copies of it Which is mock slash dragon now. I know a lot of people are like Richard Just play the Pelinor deck. That's the mock slash dra deck. Well, you know I do, I do have the Pelinor deck, but like, I just want to put Mock Slash in my Ezel deck because I like Mock Slash. Uh, Mock Slash Dragon skill is when it attacks Van or Rearguard Circle, you kind of blast one, call a card from your hand to the rear, and it gets, and this unit gets plus 5k. So you can just like combo this with like everything else. You combo this and you can call out Sacramore, which can call out another thing. Uh, you can combo this to call out Tornus, you can combo this just to call out another attack. So the whole point of my deck is just to be like being super aggro and just like constantly attacking my opponent. So, and what happens a lot of the times is I was originally running like two copies and like four of this, is people would keep killing this. And I'd be like, well, well, I guess that's the only like thing for the rest of the game because you know, the other one's in my deck somewhere. So I like the three because like, usually if one dies, I'll have like another one in my hand, hopefully. Yeah, if that one dies, I'll get the third copy, maybe. Um, I was doing this, where I had four copies of Mock Slash and three, two Sagamore to, like, max out my Mock Slash. But there would be a few times where, like, like Mock Slash would be the only grade three in my hand for writing. And be like, hmm, I don't want to ride this. So I kind of, I toned it down to balance it out. So, like, Sagamore is my backup ride. And then Mock Slash is, like, the, the helping me in multi-attack. So really, really, really good card, Mock Slash Dragon. So where are we at? We're on to the grade twos. So we're running four copies of Bowmanes. So Bowmanes skill is when it's placed on Van or Rear, you can not no, sorry, not counter blast. You discard a card from your hand, search your deck for Gareth, and call it and shuffle your deck. And on Rear Guard Circle, if this was placed by an ability, uh, it gets 3k. So uh, really nice that Bowmanes just gives you Gareth for the most part. That, that was kind of cool of Bushi to do. So, uh, makes the superior ride for Ezel like way easier because you just get Gareth um, and uh, you, you just ride Gareth, call it, or sorry, ride Bowmanes, call it Gareth since you have Cure from the Soul and you have Ezel in hand, you get the superior ride. So for the most part, you want to have Bowmanes in your hand, uh, kind of similar to the premium build. So Bowmanes is a really good card. The 3k is also nice against uh, Protect and Excel clans where like you can swing for 12 or 22 if this is on Excel circle. Uh, this is called by Sagramore's effect or Ezel's effect. Uh, you can get both skills off, which is nice. So definitely want to run four of this. Next up for grade twos, 
I am running four copies of Tornus. So Tornus' skill is if you have if your soul has one card, it gets 3k. And if your coal, soul, coal. If your soul has zero cards, this gets 8k. So with one soul, 12k attacker. With uh, no soul, a uh, 17k attacker by itself. So kind of similar to the Pelinor deck, but also like with Ezel's problem too is that you go through your soul so fast in this deck. You have Dindrain, you have Ezel, you have Sagramore, you have just a bunch of things that soul blast. So you want to take advantage of the fact you have no soul. <laughs> that sounded really dark for a second. Um, you want to take advantage of uh, of that so that you can swing with these really big beaters. And since you run four, um, you know, and it's the best part is it's during your opponent's turn as well. It's just continuous. So during your own turn, it's a 17k like beat stick that your opponent has to get over. You know, and if it gets retired, you can you run four, so you can get more copies. I like to combo this card off with Mock Slash, where like I'll have like a card I don't really care about, and then I'll attack with Mock Slash and then call this over that unit and just keep doing that. And I know that's kind of like what the Pelinar deck does too. But uh, with Ezel, you can just basically do that even more. You just you can just call something, attack, you use this to call out another Tornus, you can use this to call out another Tornus. You're just basically trying to beat down your opponent with a lot of numbers and a lot of attacks. So for sure you want to be I want to be running for this card. And last but not least, three copies of Vivian. I'm not running four copies, although four is pretty good. Um, because, you know, you can use it on Van or Rear. Um, I'll just get into this skill first, and I'll explain why later. So the skill is Van or Rear when this is placed. Count Blast 1, Soul Blast 1. Look at three cards from the top of your deck. Call a card from among them, put the rest on the bottom, and this gets 3k. So this is a Soul Blast, which means that by the time you're out of Soul, this card is a vanilla, and there's no Soul Charge engine other than rewriting in this deck. So um, I limited it to three because I feel like the max I'll use it is like two, but I also want to see it. So if if I don't have bow mains, uh, I still have Vivian to ride to start filling my field. Um, so that's my reason for running that. Uh, my reason for not running Lopier Shooter is because uh, the card calls itself after drive checks, and um, it's just kind of weird to me. I might test out with one copy, but I've, I was testing it out before and the card was just kind of weird. For me. So onto the grade ones. We're running four copies of Gareth. So call it out with Bellman, so we need four copies of Gareth too. So Gareth's skill is when it's placed by a card effect, this gets uh count plus one and you can give it to 10k. So you call it out with Bonane, Bellmains, that's a card effect. Count plus one, give it 10k. Sagramore, Mock Slash, Ezel, any of these card effects were they come from somewhere, other than just normally calling it, you can use the skill. Same with Vivian, because it doesn't save from hands, so you can do it from deck as well. So, plus 10k is really helpful with pushing for, you know, higher numbers. Uh, next up is uh, one of my favorite cards in this deck, which is Evil Slaying Swordsman, Haugen. So Haugen's skill is basically kind of like pseudo-OTT for this deck. Um, basically like letting you reveal the top or look at the top card of your deck. So its skill is when your vanguards attack hits, van or rear, so that means itself. Um, you can look at the top card of your deck and you may call it um, as long as its grade is uh, less than or equal to your vanguard. And if you do call it, you have to retire a Haugen on um, your rearguard circle. So the way this works is because the way of wording in vanguard rules is that if I ride this and I swing with it and it hits, I look at the top card Let's say it's Dindrain, right? So I can call Dindrain, and then uh, I can still call it even though I don't have a Haugen on my rear because it says if I do, I have to retire a uh, target afterwards. So it's not suggesting that I need one on the rear prior to calling the unit. So Haugen is really good in that regard where like you can still use the skill if you don't have one on the rear when you're on the Vanguard circle. And also it's really good as a rear guard in general where if when your Vanguard's attack hits, you get to reveal the top card and be like, oh, I don't want to call that. You can put it back. So uh, I really like Haugen a lot, so that's why I'm running four copies. And then, last but not least, Dindrain. So Dindrain, four copies, 
is when it's placed by a card ability, you can pick one of the two abilities, which is uh, either Soul Blast 1 draw or Soul Blast 1 to uh, counter charge and get 3k. So you cannot get 3k if you draw, but like I said, this deck goes through Soul a lot, so it's like just place it from card ability, Soul Blast, get that counter charge from Mock Slash, or get that draw to like make your hand not suck because you go through hand really quickly in this, in this deck. Um, yeah, so I uh, Dindrain also helps uh, empty the soul for Tornus, so I really do like that a lot. So I'm definitely definitely keeping my Dindrains. So that was it for the green ones. On to the triggers. I do feel like uh, the standard Gold Paladin is more of a front uh, trigger kind of deck, so I'm running eight fronts. Um, when I was testing the deck with crits, I would feel like the crit would show up, but the units would be so weak that wherever I put the crit on, it would be easily guardable. So the crit made no pressure other than like if my opponent said no guard and I got the crit and that was basically it. So I like the fronts a lot because it makes all of my units that were originally weak have a lot more power and it makes the multi-attacking a lot harder for my opponent to deal with and they kind of feel like they either have to waste their hand or they just have to start taking stuff. So I'd rather maximize the amount of fronts that I would see to kind of like guarantee that if I call stuff down and I see a front, there's still a chance I could see a front and that this could be a big play for me. Again, Gold Paladin is not really the best deck in standard format right now, so I'm trying to make the best I can with what I've got. So for draw PGs, because draw PGs are really good and draw triggers are really good. Uh, I'm not running the vanilla draw. Like I know I said that the deck has a hand problem, but um, I really need to see the fronts for the most part. So I'm running, I'm trying to run as much front triggers as I can because I really want to push for those big field numbers in my front row. So, but the four draw PGs is still really nice. And last but not least, because I'm not balls to the walls, I'm running four heals instead of four crits. Um, if you like, if you really want to go and try it out, uh, you can run, take out the heals in your deck and just run crits and see how that goes for you. And just be like, just, you know, because you don't need to heal if you're planning to win, right? You know, so try that out if you want. But I'm, ru I'm running four heals just so like, you know, I don't die. That's it for the standard deck. That was pretty quick. Um, last but not least, Excel markers. Um, I I do have fun with this deck, despite it's like, like weird like hand thing going on where there's like not much going on with uh, calling from the deck and how like you use your hands so much. Um, running the other grade twos like uh, running the other grade twos like uh, what's their face? Nemean Lion and Lopier. It's kind of weird for me because Demon only, only works for one turn. He's mostly there for shield value. And running a Lopier Shooter means I have to take out another grade two or drop down Mock Slash Dragons, um, which is kind of weird for me because I feel like Mock Slash Dragon is just a better Lopier, you know? Because it's already on the board. And instead of Lopier calling itself, you can use Mock Slash to call anything you want. So, you know, instead of being limited to just Lopier, I'd rather run Mock Slash that lets me call anything I want, you know? With Mock Slash, anything becomes a Lopier at that point, you know? And it also lets me, like, you know, figure out what order I want to do it in, where uh, Lopier is strictly after your Vanguard attacks. So, I kind of like the way my build is right now, but that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching this video. Let me know what you guys think for this build. If you have any suggestions or comments, you can, you know, go ahead and do your thing. Nothing's stopping you. Excuse me. Alright, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.